guys and welcome back to the channel daughter of increase my name is Nathan Denise for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video and I'm the founder and CEO of daughter of increase ministries that is DOI ministries and here on this channel I help you guys to increase in your faith and relationship with God and Christ through Bible studies book reviews discussions and more and I do that by posting twice a week every Wednesday and Saturday and occasionally on Tuesdays and so tonight is actually Friday night the plan is to record this tonight, edit it, and get it up for Saturday. I don't know what time Saturday, but, um, yeah, I just want to let you guys know I am feeling a little bit better, um, since I was sick. I did t put up a notice and let you guys know I wasn't feeling well. Um, in short, I got a migraine on a Friday of last week, and it was really, really bad, like, had me in tears bad, and, um, it's been hard to deal with light. Right now, I'm pretty much bearing with it just because I want to finish up um this bible study which is what this video is about but um yeah it's pretty much the migraines and then i got sick with a cold um i was congested back pains it's it's crazy um luckily my appointment is going to be october 25th to see the neurologist finally praying that they don't change my appointment again but um yeah i wanted to come on i was actually supposed to do this in three days so wednesday thursday and today but I'm actually finishing up the last three chapters in one night um, just because I didn't have the energy to do that. And um, I don't have that much energy, but I still wanted to get up and have some content for you guys this week. I don't like not having content for you guys. It just it grinds my gears personally. And I know many of you don't, you know, you're okay with it because you know I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling well, clearly. But um, yeah, I just love producing content that helps edify you guys. And so... This was supposed to be a three-day Bible study vlog, but it's turning into a one-night Bible study vlog where I finish up studying the book of Nehemiah. If you guys know, I started studying Nehemiah in August. The plan was to finish it at the beginning of September. I didn't expect to get hit with the migraines again, like one is literally throbbing now. Um, I didn't expect it to come as hard as it has, but obviously, you know, it is what it is. I gotta try to keep pushing forward. And so, um, yeah, I want to finish this. I, I just want to be done with it so that I can do the new books for um, October. And we're not even going to talk about October Bible study plans. I'm not even going to say it because if, it seems like every time I plan it, something intercepts me finishing my plans. And so we just going, we just going to keep it in the head. I know what I'm studying and I'll probably will do more of these Bible study vlogs. I think it'd be great for you guys to see how I study the word, um, how long it takes me to study the word and my thought process and things like that and so part of this video will be sped up part of this will be like normal but um yeah i am just going to dive in i have my bible here which again is the journal of the word bible so many people ask me this is the nkjv journal of the word this is not the reference bible and this is not their updated ones this is like one of their og ones this is the cloth floral i think it's called like i've had mine since 2017 um so i've been using the same bible for five years am i proud of that no but at the same time um i also want to make sure that i am reading through this bible before moving to a next bible i have started studying the bible in other journaling bibles but i feel like just multiple bibles especially when it comes to multiple journaling bibles it should it becomes a lot i started joshua in one bible i did i think colossians or galatians in another journaling bible it's too much on my mind and then i have notes all over the place instead of having notes in one bible and then transferring or changing to another bible once this is finished up so my goal is to try to get as much as i can by the end of the year um i mean we're already in october at this point um october is literally tomorrow when this video goes up and so as of now i didn't study a lot so i would love to say by the end of december i want to at least try to get through a lot of the minor prophets bring this across i'm actually going to go in with a highlighter and like highlight all the books that i actually studied in this bible particularly the only one that won't be highlighted is john because i've studied john multiple times um and many of you have asked me about the gospel of john and so that study is coming but i'm doing something very different um something that i thought about doing but then said i wasn't gonna do and then i had confirmation from one of you ladies who actually messaged me and brought it up and i was like okay god that's confirmation <laughs> and so i'll talk more about that once that is done but um john right now is on hold because of something that i'm working on 
Um, I know I still have to do the names of Jesus. I know I still have to do, uh, you know, the, the last two videos for um, the Lord's Prayer. It's just, if you guys follow me, you know, my life has been quite interesting. And so, yeah. But, um, yeah, that is the Bible that I have. And then I have all of my utensils here. So, I use Zebra Outliners. Um, those are the highlighters that I love. I mean, I've, I've raved about them so many times. So, I have the brush tip ones, which have actually the brush tip end. Right? And then I have just the regular mild liners with the dual end. So, the brush tip ones are dual ended as well. But, um, I use these to highlight in my Bible. Micron Pig... Pigma Micron, excuse me, 01 to write, as well as the Sharpie S Gel 0.38. I love a 0 0.38, 0 0.7, 0 0.5. I prefer a 0.38 because it's a lot more pointier, sharper, finer. But, um, you know, I also have some things on my tablet that I'll be using. So, um, let me just show you guys my tablet. Stuff. Okay, guys, so I have the translation, um, the Amplified translation. I love that translation. I don't own a physical Amplified. Um, I have an Amplified Bible, but it's kind of like an outdated Amplified Bible. And so I have it pulled up here because I like to use it for reference. I have, okay, so this is the Bible app. Sorry, I didn't tell you guys. So that's the Bible app for the Amplified. Then we have this, which is the it's just Blue Letter. I think this is Blue Letter app. I use it for the Audio Bible and I do the NKJV um, Dramatize. And so we're actually going to switch that. As you can see, these are the different versions, but I like the Dramatized. Um, and we're just going to go ahead to chapter 11 because that's where I'm at. Okay, let's put that down. And then I have Enduring Word and then I also have Bible Hub. I love Bible Hub for um, text analysis. Actually, let me get to that now. Text analysis. Text analysis is pretty much your concordance online. So that's what I prefer. Um, and it literally will give you all the words broken down. Strong's Hebrew or Greek if you're in the New, Trans New Testament and then the English morphology and all that great stuff. And you just click the Strong's number to go directly to that that definition. And so that is what that setup is looking okay, like. I just switched where the camera was. The camera was on that side. I switched over here just for a better view. Um, I do have a ginger ale just to help. When I get thirsty and if I get hungry, I'm just going to finish up my um, tempura sushi rolls. I had sushi for dinner, um, regular California rolls, and then I ordered the shrimp tempura, which I actually ended up loving because my one of my sisters um, drinks it and eats it. Excuse me. So yeah, I'm just going to open up this can. I am going to have my music in the background. Um, I'll go back and forth between worship music as well as just playing instrumental because obviously when i'm in worship i start singing the songs i lose track of taking the notes that i need to take and so that's what we have actually let me open up youtube right now i forgot to also open that up but um yeah this is pretty much a chill low vibe video of me doing personal bible study um typically and a chapter takes me about anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half because I am very in-depth and thorough but the new way that I've been studying the word um has just been me underlining what sticks out to me um and not feeling like I have to define every word not feeling like I have to mark every verse because that was definitely the type of person I was like every verse got a every verse is important and it's not to say that every verse is not important but I'm reading the bible in this season in a way in which if something sticks out to me it sticks out to me for this particular season because when I transition to using a new bible I'm going to have a new method in which I actually study the word and I want to also date when I'm studying certain things because I notice if I go back in this bible there's not many dates um I know I started this on October I mean August 22nd the 23rd and so like some of these have dates majority of them don't um and you know like is this Ruth yeah like this is Esther this is like when I first started like learning to bible journal it was it was it was a mess it was a mess she was a mess and so um yeah as I prepare to move into a new bible hopefully by my birthday um, my birthday is June 3rd so I want to try to finish up with this bible by June 3rd so that I can move into a new bible um obviously still a journaling word I actually have um two ESV journaling bibles 
and then I also have another NKJV that was actually gifted to me. So I have three, if I'm not mistaken, three other journaling Bibles that I own um, that I want to make use of, right? And so that's that. I'm going to start off with some worship music. Obviously, prayer is a must before we dive into the word, of course, but... yes this posted a video um and something i want to let you guys know that i'm going to start doing probably on a saturday video is shouting out a channel or a subscriber or someone i follow on instagram or something like that because i feel like especially with the christian community on social media we need to shout each other out and to help other people find others that will edify them so, like, I do have a video that I'm going to be sharing, like, my favorite YouTubers that I watched, my favorite TikTokers, my favorite um, Instagrammers, and things like that. But I do want to also shout out either a comment from a previous video or um, a channel I'm enjoying, of an uh, Instagram page I'm following, or something like that. So, I'm working out the kinks so that in October, we, we write it. When I start recording in October, rather, we're right. Um, so... Yeah, I'm gonna try to do, I'm I'm gonna try to go up to chapter thirteen, but to be honest, like I said, my eyes are bothering me. So if my eyes start to mess with me, I will dim that light down, and then um, if it becomes too much, I'm gonna just be done and then finish tomorrow. Um, so let me just save this to watch later. Yes, I see a book. I love me some good book hauls. Okay, book hauls are amazing. I said I was going to the library. <laughs> Um, I'm going to start off with worship music and prayer. Um, the worship music I'm actually going to be listening to, I have three of these videos back to back. And um, it's from Victor Thompson. He is amazing. He is the uh, writer of the song Dependable God. He's a singer and writer of that song. I love him um, as a worship leader. He is absolutely phenomenal and just soaking in worship. And that's literally what it is. He'll do like 40 minutes of soaking in worship midnight hour spontaneous worship and you know they're singing songs they're singing traditional hymns but then he's just flowing in the spirit and so um i'm probably just gonna listen to those three videos and i'll link my favorite one in the cards that one was one that literally had me in my bag y'all it was 40 minutes long but um i'm not gonna hold you guys too long we're gonna get started we're gonna get started and so yeah i'm gonna start with prayer and then jump right in so this part will be sped up most likely of me actually studying and then when i'm done with each chapter i'll come and give you guys what i got some verses that stood out to me a lot and um yeah you'll see my process my process of studying the word and how i study the word and how everyone studies the word is very different okay you don't have to study how i study um it is called bible study right it's personal for you um i have washi tape in case i need to add extra paper and let me actually grab that paper which is this I got literally from the dollar store and I, I got this one and another one that's like more pastel um so I literally just rip out a sheet so the next one will be this one I'll rip it out and write on it if I need to but um yeah I'm gonna start I'm gonna start and so this at this point it'll be sped up I'll fix the camera a bit and um yeah if you have any questions leave them in the comment section of course and I will definitely answer I know I'm terrible at answering the comments it's just been a lot it's a lot of comments, um, but I'm working on at least spending two, three hours a day getting back to comments because I don't like leaving comments unread. And I know I have comments from like a year ago unread that I still want to answer. And so, um, yeah. Quickest way to, I'm going to tell y'all now, the quickest way is not even email because my email is crazy. The quickest way to contact me is to DM me on Instagram. I will get back to you. And I'm real cool. I'm real chill. Like, a lot of ladies have contacted me. We chat almost every day, every other day. Some ladies have my number. Like, I am open to chatting with people. I'm open to actually building friendships with people. So, never think that you can't reach out to me. If I don't answer, it's not that I'm not trying to answer you. I'm just, it's, it's a lot going on. I have a lot of hats that I wear. But if you want, like, quick answers or a quick um, response, definitely Instagram me all the way. Um, at Daughter of Increase, of course. Just DM me and I always check my DMs. 
Um, sometimes a little light, just a little bit. But majority of the ladies on here can attest that I I will respond to you quicker on Instagram than I do through email. And if you got my number, then of course, like, just text or call me. Well, I do a lot of texting. I'm not really a talker on the phone unless we're like video chatting. But um, yeah, I'm more of a messaging type of person. Don't ask me why, but that just is what it is. But I'm um I'm gonna I'm gonna move on because I don't want to be in too much pain. Let's just commence with Bible study for the evening. Let me just tell y'all. I didn't I thought we was done with all the names. Honestly, because like chapter was it chapter yeah chapter 9 38 verses it felt like more than 38 verses and it literally no not 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 that chapter because chapter 9 was not that bad actually it felt like reading through a song um but like i'm trying to find that chapter because they was they, they was naming folks i mean they was going through names people i think it was chapter what chapter is this chapter 3 they were going through names of like people right then we have, is there another chapter that did that? Yeah, it was chapter 7. 7 was just a list of people. The son of, of, of this and the son of this and the son of this. I thought we were done with that, apparently. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. Because that means chapter 11 and 12 is just names. And a lot of the times I zone out, not gonna lie. But I notice that some of the names I do recognize, right? I do recognize some of those names and then if I do recognize them I will look them up to see if they're referring to the people that I'm thinking of or if they're just like people named after those names and it's irrelevant but um yeah it's it's just going through names like listen to this the work of the house were 822 mm -hmm. and Adai the son of Jeroham the son of Peleliah the son of Amzai the son of Zechariah the son of Pashur the son of Malkijah and his brethren, heads of the father's houses, were 242. Mm -hmm. And Amashai, the son of Azarel, the son of Azai, the son of Meshelamoth, the son of Emer, and their brethren, mighty men of valor, were 128. Their overseer was Zabdiel, the son of one of the great men. That's just 14 verses, y'all, of just names. This goes up to 36 verse 36 and then chapter 12 continues with naming people so i don't think this was probably the best time to make this video but um you guys can see how i get through the boring parts of the bible and yes i know somebody's been like oh my god the bible's not boring yes there are some parts of the bible that are very boring um there are some parts of the bible that are very gruesome there are parts of the bible that are very dark there are parts of the bible that are very happy very sad the bible has so many mixes of emotions and this right here when it comes to the names of people and their family members it is boring to me unless it is someone that i recognize like related to david or jesus or ruth or something along those lines i don't know none of these people I, 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 I don't think I know any outside of them naming like the different tribes and I know that the tribes are actually named after the sons right the 12 sons and so you know I'm, I'm just I'm just sitting here so y'all can just watch me go through and figure out what I'm gonna mark <laughs> and if I have anything important to say I'll pop back in um this is a real moment so I'm probably just gonna eat my sushi at this point in time as I continue okay bye bye
guys. So I finished chapter 11. Um, I know you guys saw me worship. I was trying to hold back the tears because, yeah, this song that they're doing is amazing. It's a song by Shekinah Glory. Love it. And I'm actually dancing to the song. Well, I'm not dancing. I'm flagging for my sis who is actually going to be dancing to the song. I'm just going to flag. Um, and so it had me in my, yeah. Um, but I'm done with chapter 11 right now. I don't know how long that took actually. This video was what? 20 minutes into this video so about 20 minutes um so yeah like i said chapter 11 is titled the people dwelling in jerusalem and then the people dwelling outside of jerusalem so it's just about the people having to live in jerusalem after they rebuilt the walls um with the help of nehemiah and so i not much that i got out of it because like i said verses three down to what 36 is nothing but names and locations and you know, we, we're not really here for that. But um, I will take note of some things. So in verse 1, it says, uh, Now the leaders of the people dwelt at Jerusalem. And so at this point, basically, it's letting me know that these leaders were able to, not only able to live in Jerusalem, but they had to set the pattern of people willing to leave their homes to stay basically in this place, which is like the capital, right? And in my mind, I literally put it similar to the White House in a sense where, you know, once you become president, you have to leave your old home and come stay at this, you know, the White House. And that's how I wrote it in my mind. Um, then following that, it says the rest of the people cast lots to bring out, bring one out of 10 to dwell in Jerusalem. And so what got my attention immediately was that the people had to cast lots to stay in Jerusalem. And so you have these people building this beautiful place, right? They're rebuilding the walls of the holy city and now they have to do a lottery to stay there right and so i put that not everyone could live in the holy city they must be chosen by chance to stay and so i i personally could not imagine having to go through a lottery just to dwell in the presence of god like that blows my mind and it's not to say that they're there they don't have access to god because they have access right but to to be able to be in jerusalem the holy city and to have to cast lots to be able to stay there i i just couldn't imagine it right and so um then it said the holy city and so i put according from enduring word it said that the city was rebuilt um but basically i rephrase it the city was rebuilt but needed people to be there to basically maintain and sustain it and something that caught my attention was that um when god gives us a thing to do to create to to fix right um he tells us to do it but he doesn't expect us to just let it fall at the wayside right so he wasn't expecting these people just to rebuild the wall and everybody go home no you need people there to sustain it to help maintain it through his power right and so he needed those people and so that that got my attention because it's like he he will give us ideas he'll give us these jobs he'll give us all of these things but a lot of the times we let it fall at the wayside or we forget to maintain and sustain it through him right we try to do it on our own but you can't do it alone you have to do it through him um and then it goes into saying that um in verse two and the people blessed all the men who willingly offered themselves to dwell at jerusalem and i thought it was interesting that there were some people who were willing to stay in the holy city and then there were some people who did not want to stay um and so i put that there were a few who willingly wanted to stay and so the question i asked myself was am i willing to stay for god am i willing to commune and serve him um without being concerned about what's left behind right what i'm leaving behind who i'm leaving behind um what possessions i may have left what, what i need to give no they were willing to stay um whereas some people weren't so willing to stay which blows my mind that you know you had to cast lots and then not only did you cast lots but there were some people who did not want to live in the holy city which mind blown um and then i just bolded um the part where it said willingly offered because I want to always make sure that I'm willing to offer my help for God's purpose. I'm willing to be used for God's purpose, right? And so um, I also marked this word nithinim. I didn't know what the heck it was. So I had to look it up. And it basically refers to a temple servant that is not of the tribe of Levi. So Levites were the, from the tribe of Levi and they were temple servants, right? But then you have the nithims, which were not a part of the tribe of Levi. Um, and then the only other thing I marked was down in verse 22 about the sons of Aspa. I just wrote that they wrote some of the Psalms. That's how I recognized that 
um and then i put a little you saw me pull out my stickers um the sticker book that i use i have a lot of sticker books because i used to be a paper planner i'm not a paper planner anymore <laughs> yeah but um yeah this was american crafts i think got this from hobby lobby or from michael's one or the two um but this is the faith sticker book that uh, came out yeah, it's american crafts it's the faith sticker book i'm not sure if you can still get the sticker book but i just put um three stickers one that says praise one that says note to self and then like a checklist and on the checklist i pretty much just jotted some things i was grateful for so um the first thing i put was that i do not have to cast lots um i didn't have i don't have to cast lots to be in god's presence to be before a holy god like i don't, I don't have to leave it to chance i don't have to be in a lottery i can literally just take a moment and go before him right um i noted that um i needed to always willingly offer and so again i need to always be willing to offer myself to god at all times um to lead by example because that's what the leaders of jerusalem did and because i am a leader within ministry right and i'm also leading thousands of you ladies through the ministry here um i need to lead by example then I put meant to upkeep what he gives me. And so that refers back to the point of, um, you know, the holy city was being rebuilt. They had to rebuild the walls, but they needed people there to sustain and maintain it. And so, yeah, God is going to give me these ideas. It's like him telling me create DOI. I start DOI. It gets to thousands and then I just let it drop. That doesn't make sense. Right. So I need to maintain and sustain it. Um, I put that I am not left to luck but purpose and I say that because again they cast lots there's no there's no luck in this and like a lot of people like to say oh you have good luck you have bad luck blah 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 I don't believe in luck I believe in effort time and most of all God right because God's timing is perfect but if I'm not willing to put the effort and time to align myself to his purpose and his will I'm going to be out of alignment which is going to make it seem like I have bad luck right but I also believe in grace and favor. So, yeah. Then I put two questions. Um, do I dwell with him? Meaning God. And does he dwell with me? And so, um, yeah, that's what I got out of chapter 11. Not, not a lot, literally. Um, I'll show you guys at the end a sneak peek of like chapters 11 to 13. And probably flip through Nehemiah as a whole. I'll probably make that a separate video. Yeah, I'll do this Bible study vlog for Saturday. And then Wednesday's video will be a flip through of me sharing my notes from Nehemiah. That's what I'll do. Um... But yeah, that, that's all I got out of 35, 36 verses, y'all. So I'm going to go on to chapter 12 right now. Um, I'm going to try my best not to go into worship mode because these songs are hitting. Um, but I'm also trying to focus because my head is starting to hurt. And I guess that's probably why I'm also worshiping even more is like in spite of what I'm feeling, I'm going to get in this word and I'm going to worship regardless. And so, um, yeah, I'm going to get into Nehemiah chapter 12. Um, there are... 47 verses is broken into three sections um so the priest and the levites section one nehemiah dedicates the wall which is section two and then section three is the temple responsibilities and then we only have one more chapter left which is great so this video might not be that long might not but i'm going to go back to listen to um mr victor thompson uh the video that i'm listening to should be linked in the cards as i change videos if i can remember I'll link them in the cards if not i'll just leave all the link all three videos probably just the first two um video well all three will be li linked because i didn't mention the one that i really loved but um yeah on to chapter 12. forgot to mention was how I do this so typically I listen to the audiobook first um I don't like to mark in my bible I like to just read it through first but now I have the audio bible to do that um but typically when it comes like I said to like reading names and locations and when it's like back-to-back -back information I will go and underline certain things that pop out when it comes to names like I did when I did this I marked up the sons of Asma because I knew immediately who that was or who they were um so typically I'll read listen and read whatever the case um, then I will go in and mark phrases and words and things like that and then I'll write my notes and then add my color and if I have space I will decorate with stickers um, and so yeah I'm gonna move on
All right, guys. So I finished chapter twelve. Not a lot. Um, nothing but names. So obviously, there's not much to mark. Um, I did leave this side blank because I'm actually going to journal a prayer here on the actual page, and I'm probably here too. And then on this side, stickers here, here, and here. Um, this one says glory to God, this one says rejoice, and this one says make a joyful noise. I use this because it talks about, um, the Thanksgiving choirs and how they rejoiced and how, um, they had great joy and how the, the joy of Jerusalem was heard afar off. And so, just a few things that I wrote down, um, back at the beginning. I just had a question because it wasn't found. I don't know if you guys noticed. I pulled out my other Bible. Um, this is the dates uh annotate the reference bible this is the actual actually the king james one i meant to grab the new king james but i grabbed the king james one which is the one my mom bought me um but i put does this reference to the books of chronicles because i'm not sure um it it talks about something being written in the book of chronicles and i wanted to know you know in the future when i get to like somewhere in the scripture i can come back and reference this but um that was just a personal question that i am going to take the time to research to see if um, these people are mentioned in the book of Chronicles. Um, and so that was in verse 23. Um, verse 43 um, stuck out to me a lot because it says, Also that day they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced, for God had made them rejoice with great joy. The women and the children also rejoiced, so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard afar off. And so I was really into two parts of that verse. Um, the first part was, for God had made them rejoice with great joy. I put that when believers rejoice together, we can see the great things of God and feel them as we consider all that he has done. And it's not to say that you don't feel that, obviously, when you're home alone rejoicing, right, and worshiping. But it's something about corporate worship, just like there's something with corporate prayer that really just allows you to really see the goodness of God. Um, and then the part where it says, "Joy, um, the joy of Jerusalem was heard afar off, I put is your worship a testimony of the good and great things that God has done? When people look at you and they see your worship, can they hear the goodness from how you're worshiping? Can they hear the joy from how you're speaking of God, right? And so um, that's what I put. And then the last thing was in verse 47 when they're talking about things being consecrated. It says, they also consecrated holy things for the Levites and the Levites consecrated them for the children of Aaron. I underlined the part that says consecrated holy things and I put do I set apart the sacred things for God and so I wasn't just thinking about you know like my Bible but like study time quality time do I set that apart right do I make it a, a, a priority to set time apart for God right do I make it a priority to set in worship time do I take make it a priority to set in um, to set aside excuse me the time to, to be to, to share my gratitude right do I set that time apart um, because sometimes I don't, and so that's what came to my mind, and so, yeah, that was chapter 12, so now I'm going to move on to the last chapter, which is literally just these two pages, and I'll be done, you guys, I'll be done, and it's 9.56 right now, which is actually crazy, I thought this was going to be a longer, bit, a longer, longer video, but I didn't realize that it was just a bunch of names for chapters 11 and 12, which worked out since I don't have to be up too long, so I'm going to tackle this last chapter, um, I'm still on the same song, you guys, so... It's not taking me that long to get through it because it's quick to fly through. So I'm listening to the audio, Bible, and marking. So, um, yeah. I'm just going to bring up 13. Um, now. And, uh, yeah, you can watch me finish off this study.
right, guys. So, I finished um, chapter 13. So, I have officially completed studying through Nehemiah. It has been great to dive deeper into this. Um, I really, really enjoyed just the things and the nuggets. Uh-oh, I forgot to highlight that. We did not see that. Where's my pink? Pink has to be all the way at the bottom, really. Um, it is 1024. So, not as long as I thought it was going to take me. Um, but, I have finished studying and I'm happy to have completed finishing Nehemiah. Um, I have plans for four books in the Bible that I want to study, but we're not going to talk about that. Um, but yeah, I really, really enjoyed that. So I guess I can tell you guys what I got from 13. Um, I got quite a lot from 13, so I don't even know where to begin. Um, but basically it's titled The Principles of Separation. And, um, basically in chapter 13 we see that Nehemiah had returned back to working for the king, obviously, out of Xerxes. And, um, upon returning, he finds out that there is still some you know, shifty business going on, even after having cleaned, um, and rebuilt, build, uh, rebuilding everything, and so, just some things that stuck out to me, um, in verse 2, it talks about how our God turned the curse into a blessing, and so I put that he takes all into account and cannot be caught off guard, God is never taken off guard when we do something that people consider to be a mistake, and an example is, when I got pregnant with my son, um, you know, I wasn't like 18 or whatever. I was in my 20s, over 21, 21, 22, something around that age, about 21, 22 when I got pregnant. And, um, you know, that wasn't a part of what I wanted to do. But obviously living in sin leads me to basically, you know, have a child out of what life. Um, and so for me, it was like, oh my God, off guard, right? But for God, God takes into account every little thing thoughts every little mistake that we are going to have right and so he's not caught off guard by what I do w will he be upset with what I do of course um I don't even want to say upset because people, when you say upset people are like oh my god he's angry right but he will dislike the things that I do especially if I'm doing them and it's sinful right and so God can never be caught off guard we're caught off guard because we're like oh my god didn't expect that right but it's not that God didn't expect it God takes every Thing into account and no matter what anybody says everything is taken into account I'm gonna just leave it there okay um so that was like what stuck out to me on that um then in verse 8 it talks about how Nehemiah was grieved bitterly because of what the priest uh was doing um and being sinful and so I put this evil and sin grieve your heart as it does God's as well as the Holy Spirit, because there's that verse about, you know, breathing the Holy Spirit. Um, then there's there's this, this this section, right, in verse 10 and 11, where it says that the portions for the Levites had not been given, and so each of the Levites and the singers who did the work had gone back to his field, and so Nehemiah had asked the rulers, why is the house of God forsaken? This is three different parts. I'll show you guys through my flip through. But um, basically, I put that the people did not hold to obedience, right? They didn't know hold to what God said about giving to the Levites, right? To the people who are serving in the temple, right? And because of this, they didn't support, they didn't give what they should have. And so there was a lack of support that ended up hindering the Levites and the singers. And so because of that lack of support, they felt, why do anything? And so they decided to just leave and move on, right? And so a lot of the times we see it in ministries, we see it in jobs, we see it in family members when you don't get that support. You move on, right? You move, you leave, you move on to something else where you're going to get more support. And so I put, am I truly being a support and am I really uplifting others? Because that is essential, right? And even when he talks about why is the house of God forsaken, forsaken can be in more ways than one, right? It's not just always the financial way, but you can forsake the house of God by not supporting the people who were meant to maintain the house of God, right? And so, um, that stuck out to me. And then there was a lot of, like, like three little prayers he did in between talking about remembering and whatnot. And there's a part that he talked about Solomon in verse 26. He says, Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? 
that is having um, married basically outside of his belief, right? Um, nevertheless, pagan women cause him to sin. And so what I put is that Solomon is a, a great example of why I should never date outside of my belief in God, follow God's leading to not be led astray. And what I mean by that is it's not to say that God wouldn't tell me to marry an unbeliever so that he can do the work to bring that believer in and convert that believer, right? I said God, right? God has your person, your partner, whoever you want to call for you, right? A lot of the times we just go with the flow. I don't really like that term, go with the flow, because the flow don't be going somewhere. <laughs> like the flow, it could be a backwards current or something. We don't, we don't know, right? And so for me, out of my last relationship, I know for me, I want to make sure that the next person I'm with is a believer. I don't want to be led astray, right? And it's not to say that, you know, my ex had led me astray from God. No. Oddly enough, I got closer to God within that relationship, but it pulled us apart, um, which became more prevalent for me to see because of where I was going spiritually. And I get it now, obviously, years later. But um, there are certain things that you will basically be susceptible to when you date outside of your belief, right? And I'm, I'm being real cautious of what I'm saying because I know somebody's going to, you know, people in, on the internet take things and run with it and, like, change everything you say, right? Again, it's not to say that God is not going to tell you to get with somebody who is currently an unbeliever because God knows the plans of all people. Not all of us started off as believers, right? And so this is why I said follow God, follow God's leading to not be led astray because when I follow him, when I'm hearing his voice, when I am in tune with him, when it comes to getting into dating again, I'll be able to know, okay, is this person for me? Is this person um, a child of God, right? Is there an, uh, I don't want to say an interest because an interest sounds weird, but is there an interest to um, get closer to God? Are they showing that they want to be a child of God? Are they showing that they want to be close to God? Are they building themselves up spiritually? Because if you're not building yourself spiritually, then what are you bringing to the table for me? For me, you know, the, the finances and all the cause and all blah, 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 that's all great, right? But I've learned through the course of dating and getting into failed relationships, obviously, that I need somebody that's going to build their spiritual, well, their spiritual life, their faith. If you are not building your faith, what is the point of us being together? That's just how I see it for me right now. Um, and again, it's not to say that obviously somebody who's financially stable is good and someone who's kind and someone who's nice. That's not sweet. That's, that's all right. But my thing is, um, I feel like this was good for Nehemiah to mention because at this point, you know, at this point, he's he's letting people know why we need to be separated. The people are understanding why God said what he said about being separated and not into marrying and things like that. Right. Um, sons not marrying these daughters that were not of God's people because they will cause you in some shape form or matter to fall off and it, it's not always intentionally right because you know when somebody's like trying to get you to fall off but over time things just happen and so I like that he put that in there and so yeah that was pretty much what I got I am done with this study I'm so excited and so I am right now going to just take a, a highlighter and just highlight the books that I've studied so far in this Bible. Even the ones that I started, I'm going to highlight to see how much I've actually done because I don't know how much I've actually studied. Um, and I want to use this green color because it's pretty. But um, I'm done. The sticker books you saw me using throughout this study. Um, again, this is the American Crafts Faith sticker book. I don't know if this one is still available. I don't know if I got this from Hobby Lobby or Michaels, but that... And then this one is the Paper Studio Foiled Phrases, Words, and Icons um, Faith Sticker Book. I think I got this again from Hobby Lobby or Michaels. I have a lot of stickers from when um, I was a planner, like a paper planner. But um, yeah, that is it. That is it. That is it. That is it. And so I'm going to go in this video so that I can edit it. And um, yeah, let me know if you guys are interested in more of these videos where I do Bible study vlogs, um, where I show you guys how I study, what I'm getting out of the study. And then, like I said, Wednesday's video will be a flip through of the book of Nehemiah. So you'll be able to see in depth each page, um, what I wrote and things like that. I'll try to stick, uh, share with you guys some like important things that I got, um, from off the pages, things that are like extra important to me. 
and things like that and um yeah i will also do a video when i dive into the book of ezra i will have a video of me doing like background research before i study because before i study any book of the bible i do go and look up background information on it to know the author the timing the language um the context right and things like that and so um i do know for a fact my next two books will be titus and jude i'll be finishing those in two days because titus is three chapters i can do that in a day and then jude is literally a chapter um a couple of verses so i can do that and then i want to do prophets and so um yeah i'm trying to see which oh i did start actually marking things i did but i'm gonna have to redo that um but yeah i'm gonna go i'm gonna go finish the rest of this change my clothes wash my face brush my teeth and rest my eyes because they are starting to burn a bit um my migraine did go away that i was just feeling not too long ago like when i started this video the one i had because i did eat a few more bites so i'm just going to eat um a lot of the times i take that back because i just felt the throb <laughs> take that back but it's not as bad it's very minimum so i'm gonna go and uh yeah if you made it to the end of this video put whatever this emoji is don't know what it is y'all know i never know um and i'll go and i'll see you guys for wednesday's video bye